<laughs> He's trolling. Great demo. Three seconds of actual demo. Two out of ten. Do better. It's 2022 now, and there's so many places online that you can learn how to produce music. But how do you know which tips or advice are actually helpful? Good thing you clicked on this video because I've been producing for long enough to know what's good or what you probably need to avoid. Hi, I'm Ash, welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're dopamine starved like me, the best place at the moment to get your fix is the number one app and website of 2021, TikTok. This cursed app's algorithm, I swear. However, TikTok is notorious for having a bit of a misinformation problem. And being a producer, I wondered, what kind of advice are the music production Zoomers given over there? So of course, I went to check it out for myself and uh, found some, well, you'll see. By the end of this video, you'll know which types of tips to follow and which to avoid. Since I've so thoughtfully and scientifically rated them for you, or see a one to 10 scale, you might be surprised by the results. Here's how it went. How to make a basic recording setup for under $500. Oh, what? what? $100. Wait, wait, wait. $29.99, but he's, he's saying to use Pro Tools. If you're gonna start with a DAW, don't start with Pro Tools. Like Ableton is a free 90 day trial. It's under $500. He doesn't factor in the cost of the computer either. Huh? Acoustic foam panels aren't needed until you like know, know, know what you're doing. Slow tools, yeah, dude. The only reason Pro Tools is industry standard is because it's been used for so long and it's good for like live shit. But people who use Pro Tools are switching over to Logic anyway, if you're gonna be doing anything involving live instruments, so. Oh no. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a strong three out of 10. He had me in the first half here. Like this is a pretty good starter interface. I recommend the Motu M2 over it, just cause it's got loopback and it's got way less latency. So that's my take on that. And this is why Logic is a superior door for workflow. Put Space Designer on it. It's just a stock reverb plugin and it's actually got a reverse button. Oh no shot. Now this is what it sounds like. Okay, all right. Okay, they got me there. It's like five more steps in Ableton to do that. He proved it. Eight out of 10. Good job, Lost Leo. Free plugin, Yo, dope AF. Let me put you onto this free plugin called Micro. Resets. Listen. I hate when they do this with the videos. They just keep zooming in. What was that? It's free. Just talks about it. Doesn't even show what it sounds like. <laughs> He's trolling. Great demo. Three seconds of actual demo. Two out of ten. Come on, bits. Do better. Compression is a huge part of mixing, but there's so many different applications for it. So as a series, we're going through all of them. Type which one you want to see in the comments first, like and follow. Not even a hint! Ugh! How to make one of those sad boy, fuck boys, alternative trap songs. First thing, more important than the music, you must become a sad boy. Wear something around your neck. It can be anything, just like you. Doesn't have to be a value. Oh, this guy's meaning. Tattoo. Muffle that beat on the vert. This guy really in Pro Tools right now. Program an 808 to go behind it. Power chords on an acoustic. This guy's just trying to meme. Zero out of 10. Cause like if you're memeing, at least be funny. My face the whole time. Do you have to be active on social media to make it in music? As an artist, producer, an engineer, whatever it is. I've actually posted about this before. And at this point, some of my own, like I, I disagree with some of my own previous viewpoints. So I'm gonna post about it again, but I thought I'd ask the World Wide Web first. No, it's not even a tip. He's just, it's just trying to start a conversation. What's my take on that? Yes, be active. There's a lot of artists that don't get discovered who are extremely talented because they don't know how to market themselves and they don't know how to put themselves on social media and get people's attention. And you see a lot of artists who aren't very good at all, who are killing it because they know how to present themselves on the internet. That's something I'm still trying to learn how to do. Something I'm trying to get better at. If you wanna take this shit seriously, yeah, you have to be on social media. This is a good comment here. You don't have to be active, but if you aren't, you are leaving money on the table. Exactly. Like you don't have to be freaking posting every day, like straight up influencer type until you're like blown up, blown up. But like having some kind of presence and consistent presence so that people will find you. And if they see your name, they're like, oh, I know who that is. I'm going to listen to their thing. I want to share my mixing process for mixing drum. So the first thing I do is just listen to the beat. Pro tip, guys, if you're mixing drums, listen to the beat. 
and from there I just reduce the volumes of the sounds which I think are too high. For example, it's a snare over here, and then the hi hats. So that's just doing by ear. And after th actually, that's really good advice. Because a lot of y'all get caught up in mixing by like, what's EQ, what's compression, what's panning, what's all this, when mixing, at the end of the day, is literally what he just said. Oh, this thing's a little bit too loud, let me turn it down. Let me get everything kind of balanced out first. That's where you start with mixing. I like this guy. After that, what I do is I open up Fruity Limiter, which is on the master, and I look at the waveform of the drums. So what I try to do is keep the kick the highest in volume. Gain staging? Yeah, I guess that's the name for it. I just call it freaking just balance everything out. Because gain staging is a, like, it's another term that confuse people. The waveform, so I will reduce that. Okay, to me this sounds good. So together with the melodies, it sounds like this. If you found this helpful, you can share this with your producer friend and if there's a better- 8 out of 10. 9 out of 10 even. Just gets down to the basics. I'm not sure what he did with the limiter there. A little bit confused, but let me let me run that back. Highest in volume. You can oh yeah, see yeah. This yeah, yeah. Keep, keep the kick at the highest volume. That's absolutely correct. Hell yeah. This guy knows. He's not talking about EQ, compression, panning, none of that stuff. Like this, what he's talking about here is the most important part of mixing. Just making sure the sh that needs to be loud is loud, stuff that needs to be quiet is quiet. That's all. And everything balanced. Here's how to make drum and bass in like 15 seconds. Start okay. by choosing a tempo around 174 BPM. Okay. Then add some drums that sound like pooch, 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 pooch. Wait, okay, hang on. I think that's a little bit too complex for a drum and bass beat. It should just be like, do ka, do ka. This guy's like trying to go a little bit too crazy with that already. Sound like pooch, 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 pooch. That's like, there's no flow to that. How do you dance to that beat? That's not drum and bass, that's punk. Yeah, there's to way too many kicks bass. in that. It's a cool melody Off, though. Yeah, some vocal chops. Now just add that all together and you're done. Oh, this is messy. No, it's so messy. Where's the side chain, bro? Three out of 10. He really didn't nail it on the drums part of the drum and bass. Rare miss. <laughs> nope, he says. Oh no, terrible. Nope, this guy's, oh no. I like the melody. And I think the, the bass is doing too many things too. Okay, the problem is he's got a vocal chop and he's got a melody and they're all fighting with each other. So three out of 10. What else we got? Quick tip to getting your growl basses to sound nice and wet like this. All right, so I have this patch that I made in Serum using the Alien Spectral wavetables, which already have those really wet overtones anyway. All you gotta do is pitch them down real low to really bring them out. But one thing that's important in this patch that's really making it sound a whole- Is he gonna say band reject? Cause that's like the best way to do that. A lot better is LFO3 right here. <laughs> So what this is doing is at the end of the LFO cycle, it's pitching down the master tune of Serum by uh, by a full octave, which is bringing out those wet overtones even more. So if I were to turn off LFO 3 and bypass it, check it out. And then we'll turn it back on. Sounds so much wetter. Oh, it's up, just, just a pitch down. Window, your source is going to be LFO That's pretty cool. 3. Destination I like that. is master tune going unipolar and then bring it's kind of hard to tell off phone speakers because he's just recording it off a phone mic phone microwave phone micro phone microphone. But I fucks with it. So what's annoying though is he doesn't show what all the other LFOs are doing. So like it's really important that he's showing the phaser moving as well because the phaser here is what's doing a lot of that that like squelchiness too. And if you want to do even more of that, use a band reject filter because it works something similar to what this tuner is doing and it, it sweeps frequencies but it does the high and the low at the same time and you can go like inside and outside so you get like really crazy freaking squelchy sounds by that so this one's like a six out of ten how can we load more lfos in serum you have four lfos in serum that should be enough and then you can also use three the three envelopes and i don't know why you'd need more than four i've never ever used more than four and if you are you might be uh 
You might be overcomplicating it, friend. All right, on to... Easiest way for you to learn compression. Glue compression is a popular technique hey, gorilla glue. based off of this compressor. Think of a glue compressor as a nice bodyguard. It allows a wide range of sounds and transients to pass through without squashing the sound. Most people use it for yes. these things. Like if I'll hey, what are you... I hate when they do that. I hate TikToks. You have to like pause. And then like next thing you know, you're you're done with the video. You're on to the next one. Bus channels, transparent mi mastering, tightening mixes. True. I mean, he doesn't really give any good examples of what glue compressor does. Like he's right, but only if you know what all of this stuff is. I don't know. I really like approaching it from a beginner standpoint. Is that how I'm judging these? The uh, seven out of 10. Cause like he, you're, you're right. Yeah, if you put it on a bus or like if you're in Ableton, you put it on your group. Glue compressors are really dope because as it says, it just glues everything together, like not squashes it all, but it makes everything sound more unified. And in turn, yep, that'll tighten your mix as well. So he's right with that. I just think he could have explained it better. And if you're in Ableton, the, the glue compressor is a stock plugin. So it's pretty dope. I use it a lot. I use it a lot for parallel compression too. I use it all the time on my drums. Today we're making a song with no notes and no melodies. Most of these sounds I made just by touching an aux cable. I also used some granular synthesis. And a crazy bass with no real note. Let's put it all together. Oh, that's sick. Yo, that's fucking sick. Yeah, that's such a cool idea to do something without really like a key or like any real melody. But if you listen to that, it's still got flow. Really f***ing cool. Definitely has notes and melody, my guy, but still cool. I mean, like, yeah, everything inherently has notes or melody, but he didn't set out to do that. This guy's just being a dick. Creative. Awesome end result. This one's good. Nine out of ten. How to make vocals louder. Are you producing a song and you're like, God, I wish I could hear my vocal more. Here's three easy tips to help. Just turn record it up. Your first vocal. Five head. Then record two more and pan them both left and right. Add two extra harmonies for the chorus. And don't forget to pan them. Like and follow for more tips. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, that's it. That's how you do vocals. Literally. You have your lead layer. You have your double left, double right, harmony left, harmony right. And you get like nice vocal stacks. The only thing is they they explained it as in like how to they make your vocals louder. I think what they were trying to say is how to stack vocals properly or how to record vocals properly. Because yeah, at the the end the end result is going to be louder, but like these will get you vocals that sound actually like real, if that makes sense. So making vocals louder, you can do it with compression as well because there's like different dynamic range when you're recording vocals. And I'm talking about recording vocals here, right? I'm not talking about when you grab a vocal off of Splice because those vocals tend to already be properly recorded. And if you're recording your own vocals, you wanna make sure that you're like chopping up the vocal and balancing out all the levels as you listen back to it. So it's not freaking super dynamic. So it's even, you know, very good. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Let's go. What else we got? People that mix music or produce music or just in general work inside of a DAW and edit songs. How often do you actually? The guy has an 808 shirt. Do you actually sit down and listen to the whole song front to back without going and editing something or trying to change something or looking at your phone? How often do we actually just listen? to the whole thing at once. And there you go. This is actually the best advice. I still do this. I will listen to a bounced version of it. I will be away from the computer and I will literally just have a notebook. And as I'm listening, I will start writing down a list of stuff that I wanna change or stuff that I wanna work on. Because the problem is if you do that inside of Ableton or inside of FL, wherever you are, and you start doing your edits as you hear them, you get caught up in just that one edit or that one little task that you're working on and you just lose all that momentum to get the rest of the song done. And you have, you like run the risk of like ruining the song because you're not, you're not making significant changes. Let me spend the next 15 minutes trying to adjust this loud snare instead of 
listening to the whole thing, like I said, I have my notebook and I'll write down, oh, snare is too loud, continue listening to the song. And then when I finish the bounce test, then I can go back to it. Then I have a big list of stuff that I need to fix or change and you're just so much more efficient that way, and it brings your song closer to being finished. So this tip, absolutely, 10 out of 10. Let's freaking go. Henry with a three, amazing. If you're into 808s, you probably know the bass is made with a sine wave. But what if it were made with a square wave? We're about to find out. Skrillex does this. Sound science. You can see that this patch was made with a classic sine wave. For Ew, I don't like how he's talking into the mic. This is how you make a sine. And turn up oscillator one. Why are you talking like that, bro? To a square wave. Now we'll bring the high end down. This is hyper pop. Overall level. I can love more kismet. For the fact. For the past few months, people it have is more been calling me Hannah Montana, and I never fully understood why, but now that I think about it, on one day, I am currently suffering through my economics class, and the next, I'm doing this. I can love more kismet! If you're an artist, and you have this overlooked habit, you are shooting yourself straight in the foot. 99% of you have not thought about this, I guarantee okay. you. Why are your favorite artists your favorite? Because they're the best? No. Otherwise, Kanye West would be everybody's top pick, obviously. <laughs> I'm just I know you almost got triggered, though. I almost got you. What I'm trying to say is you like people because of their unique qualities, not because they're the best at something. Oh, that's facts. Guys, do you hear what he said? This is another 10 out of 10 tip for anybody who is like maybe a little bit not self-confident in themselves. It's not about being the best at something. It's about like focusing on your own unique qualities that'll make you stand out. So what should you have on your vocal chain? Let's talk about it. So for this video, I want to try and give you a few things to think about when making your own vocal chain rather than just a bunch of random plugins that probably won't mean much. So the first thing I'd recommend is just listen to the vocal a few times in the song and really just try and identify the problems without looking at an analyzer. So, you know, does it sound a bit too roomy? Is there some resonances in the high mids or low mids that you want to attend to? And yeah, just really identify the problems using your ears, I guess. And then the second thing I like to think about is dynamic. So how dynamic is it currently? Do you need to control it? Do you need to make it more dynamic? And then what are you going to reach for to do that? Is it going to be some compression, some automation, some clip gaining? Um, yeah, just thinking about that. The third thing I usually think about is just color and tonality of a vocal and how we can sort of enhance that to have a better relationship with the song. So, you know, it could just be a case. He sounds like he's just saying words. I think it's giving good advice, but I can't tell. You know those people who try to give music advice? but it sounds like they're just trying to show off how much they know. That's this guy. Um, so four out of 10. Here's the best way to sidechain in less than 10 seconds. Start by grabbing the sound you want to sidechain, then grab your thing you want to sidechain it with. Now here comes the sauce. Go to your pattern view and make a selection that is the length of your sidechain source. Yep. Right click on the volume of the thing you want to sidechain and hit create automation clip. This automation clip controls the volume of the thing we're sidechaining. Now drag the beginning down and voila. If you want a more or less aggressive sidechain, just mess with the curve. FL sidechain using the little clips is kind of cool. But you can do the same thing in freaking Ableton with utility. And then I do I do duck just to, to automate everything so I don't have to freaking do this every time. But that's just me. I'm just lazy. Never automate volume slider in FL. It's going to mess up everything. Oh, true. See, I don't I didn't know that. OK, so that that way to sidechain is probably like because because Oscar says to use fruity balance and not Oh, there, it's in the comment right here. I just wanted to explain this style of sidechain mainly, but like you're gonna, if you do that, you're gonna make people's lives harder. Why? Uh, all right, so I'll give this one four out of 10 then. Sheer. Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss, three essential plugins, layering claps and snares. Feels weak by itself. It's nice to put two together so you get the best of both worlds. You Clap and snare layering saved my life. No kizzy. Usually the snare has a transient, right? The transient on the snare is usually bigger than the clap because the clap is kind of like there's more sustain, there's more ring out, but the initial hit yes, is harder on the snare. So what we want to do in order to get both of these to fit is to remove any transient that the clap may have. Yes, so sir. So what we're going to do is we're going to shave off a little bit of the transient. From the <laughs> like how he's using a freaking whiteboard. Right? So we're just going to shave off that transient so that this transient can pop through, but then the rest of the clap 
kind of takes over. You know what I actually like doing? I like doing the opposite. I like having the, the clap hit right before the snare because of that weak into strong transient and you get this like flammy sound. And holds out the sustain because the sustain in the snare isn't quite as long. It doesn't sound quite as good because it's not as full. So you get the best of both worlds when you mix the two together, but you have to do it in, pro in a proper way so that the transient sticks out and then you get the body. You guys don't know what a transient is. It's like, it's the first hit of any sound. And usually that's the, the thing that punches through. So if you want a punchier snare, you want to adjust its transient so that it's louder. Is the beginning of a waveform. I wish he would show me an example though. This is good advice because essentially you don't want transients overlapping. Right? And that's why I say I like putting the clap a little bit before because you get that like double transient. So you get kind of like a flam effect. So it's like a like that. I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> yeah, this is good advice. You don't want to make sure two transients are overlapping or else that's also where you get a lot of mixing issues because there's just like this random big loud spike in your song and you're like dang where the hell did that come from yeah so good advice i wish you showed an example to fit the key of your song you've probably noticed when you download a sample pack you see 808s that are tuned differently g sharp d e c they're all different and it causes a problem until you tune it properly so if you have an 808 sample for this example let's say it's a d Okay, so every time you hit the home key, which is the C, it's actually going to be producing a D because that's what the sample is tuned to. So in order to get this to fit properly yes, on your keyboard so that each note is playing right, so if you hit a C, it's a C. If you hit a D, it's a D. You have to tune it, and they're called semitones. Semitones are each in... Um, you can... If you're in Ableton, you can just set the sampler to what the key of the 808 is in and then you don't have to tune the 808 you can just tell the sampler like oh this is a d note and then the sampler will adjust to that good advice if you're not using ableton's sampler six out of ten okay bottom line is guys TikTok, it's fantastic i love it the meme potential unmatched i was feeling thirsty your mom gave me a gallon of honey to quench that you but for learning, probably not the best place. See, the issue is you only get about 10 to 30 seconds to grab somebody's attention, and the nuances of the information presented is completely lost. Another trend I notice is a lot of the creators on there are pretty new to production. Now, there are people giving solid advice. Just because you're new at something doesn't mean your take is immediately not valid. Because at the end of the day, everybody has different perspectives, and someone who's just as seasoned a vet as I am can and learn stuff from somebody who's much newer than me. If anything, at least watching these videos help you confirm stuff you already know. And there isn't a producer tip or advice in the world that's gonna beat straight up practice and application. And one of the best ways to do that is to subscribe to awesome YouTube channels like this one where I break down artist process sound design in a way that's much more structured, yeah! And only if you wanna keep learning. So remember, we're all still learning even me. And at the end of the day, these are just my takes on some of these pieces of advice. There's lots of stuff I agree with, stuff that I don't, and maybe even you disagree with. So honestly, just do what works for you. This is just my opinion. But if you're telling new producers that all you need to get started is Pro Tools and audio foam on your walls, then I don't know, <laughs> maybe seek help. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As I said earlier, please like the video, subscribe to my channel if it helped you out or if you enjoy what I'm doing. Leave a comment if you agree or disagree with any of these takes. But most importantly, go make some bangers. Peace.